Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Give you all a few minutes to uh, go, to come on in the live uh, before I start and before I begin um, going over some things that's on my mind and my heart today. Uh, good afternoon, Loretta. How are you, my sister? Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Please share the live if you don't mind. What's going on, my brother, Lionel? Uh, please share this live. I made it public. Uh, I might even answer some questions um, as we uh, as we speak together. Um, <clears throat> give people a few more minutes to uh, to jump on in. What caused this exposure of Craig? I know it was needed, and I'm thankful. Um, what caused it? Actually, Tiffany, it was it was it was well overdue. To be honest with you, um, uh, the impetus of it was actually the post that I put up October 26th regarding uh, Kanye West, um, and so basically that was the straw that broke the camel's back, and I decided to just respond and deal with the hypocrisy. Of what was going on in this man's ministry for quite some time now. Hey, what's going on, Tisha? What's up? What's up, Ish? All right. Um, let's see. Let me see if anybody else is going to jump on the live, and I'll get started. Um, I do have I do have a um, have quite a bit I want to cover and discuss. Um, I want to uh, preface my myself and, and and give some give some disclaimers uh, uh, for a moment. For a few moments. Number one, um, I've been doing this, uh, or I've been involved in apologetics for, to be honest with you, since, man, since I've been, uh, since I've been a Christian. Um, <clears throat> and with that, uh, there have been, there have been topics and issues that I have addressed and have been, you know, um, dealing with that I know um, it's not always popular. But I strive to be fair. I, I strive to be balanced. I strive to um, handle things um, with integrity and fairness um, to the best of my ability. And when those things are not done right, then I need to make it right. Um, so that's that's my that's my disclaimer on that. I'm not here to be anyone's conscience. Okay. Um, I, I am. I'm a fellow brother, fellow believer, uh, fellow co-laborer in Christ, right along with you. And so I do understand that we all have our different uh, lanes to run. We all have our different uh, assignments that we must be faithful to fulfill and to complete. Uh, but with that said, um, I make no apologies for the things that I stand for and the things that I speak out against uh, because we need truth to be proclaimed if not, if not now, more than ever before. Um, so when I see things that that are that are damaging, that are uh, that are deadly, that could be causing or that can cause people to fall away or to 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 sin and to stumble into sin. Then it's my responsibility, and it's not just my responsibility. It's, it's the responsibility of every born again believer. If you are my brother, then you know that we are to care for each other. We're to bear one another's burdens, as Galatians six uh, teaches. Um, we're, we're to we're to weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. We're we're, we're we're so interconnected with the body of Christ that what you do affects other believers, whether positively or negatively. It's going to affect us either directly or indirectly, but it's going to be an effect nonetheless. Um, so this issue with, with G. Craig Lewis and, and the issues that I've been dealing with for the past two months now, uh, it, it, has its, it has its points of exhaustion. It has its points of um, stress and overwhelming um, burden at times, 
But God's grace is is more than sufficient uh, because he's assigned me this. He's he's called me to do this. I know he's called me to do it. Uh, I make no bones about that. Make no doubts or questions about that. I know he's called me to do it because I'm doing it. And if he wanted other people to do it, he would have called them to do it. So um, I'm not I'm not here to act like I'm the only one that, that's going to. No, it's not that. But right now, I am the only one that God has called to deal with G. Craig Lewis. I believe it should have been dealt with a long, long time ago. I believe it is well overdue. I believe that the damage that has been caused um, to, to the body of Christ by this man, we will probably never, ever know. Um, and this is why I read the testimonies uh, that are given to me by permission. That is why I post uh, comments and make videos um, of these of these matters because I want you to know that they are real people. They, they, these are your brothers and sisters. Whether you like them, whether you agree with them, whether you affirm everything that they believe or don't teach, or whatever the case might be, these are your brothers and sisters. And in, and 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 in saying that, that comes before our petty preferences. Um. And I'll go as far as to say this. Some of you who will watch this video and are watching this video right now live don't like me. Some of you have radio shows and some of you have platforms and some of you have uh, 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 means and vehicles that you could promote the content that I that I present. But you won't because you have issues with me. You have personal issues with me. You don't like what I do. You don't like what I've said. Um, you may have personal issues that go get that go back some years. And instead of, of of saying, you know what, this issue that this brother, if you consider me one, this issue that this brother is, is addressing, this is above and beyond my personal issue and gripe and beef with with him. So for the sake of truth, for the sake of the, the name of Christ for the sake of unity, for the sake of protecting God's God's sheep, I'm going to come alongside. I'm going to stand for the truth. I'm going to hold fast to that which is good. I'm going to proclaim this message because this is above me. This is above me having an issue with somebody else. This is above me, you know, not liking uh, Seiko Woods. This has to do with the church. And since this has to do with the church and I help make up the church, then what affects you affects me and vice versa. We have people that are hurting in God's church as a result of this man. And I'm calling on all of you as brothers and sisters in Christ to stand with me and helping to expose, helping to call this man's actions and deeds to account. To help and first of all to pray and then secondly to put your prayers in action because the bible says faith without works is dead some things we don't even pray about because we know it just needs to be done if you see your child in the street and a car is coming you're not going to pray that the car hits his brakes before it hits your child. No, you're going to go out into that street, go into harm's way, and if necessary, give your life for the sake of your child. And some of us are not even willing to, to give our Facebook lives up for the sake of our brothers and sisters in Christ. And what do I mean by that? You, you, you don't even want to risk being blocked or being deleted or being, uh, you know, called names or, 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 or being, you know, called out because how you are seen is more important than how God is being seen. God's name is being mocked uh, by, by people who are now looking at, that are now looking at this situation with G. Craig Lewis. And they're saying, see, they're all like that. See, I knew he was, I knew he was this. See, I knew he was that. And instead of us saying, well, you know what? That's him, but that's not the church. That's not all of us. We basically tuck our tails. We don't want to stand alongside or stand beside those who are taking a stand. We rather just, you know, play, 
play the background, lay low in the cut, you know, be a little nick at nights. And we see the battle. We see the carnage. We see the bodies strewn around God's church. And what are we doing? How are we responding? We need to respond more than just with prayers, but with putting our prayers in action. So with that being said, and that was all my disclaimer, but with that being said, I want to read to you and I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, let you know now this that I have here is 14 pages. This is a 14 page letter that was given to me by a former member of ABC. And with this person's permission, I have I have the 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 privilege and opportunity to read it. And I'm going to read this this uh, this letter. It, it, it is lengthy. Bear with me um, because I want to read it in its entirety. Then I want to make some comments. I'm going to share some scriptures and um, and then that'll probably be it. Should the Lord say the same. The title of this letter is is, is titled ABC which stands for Adamant Believers Council, ABC, Excommunication, dated Monday, December 16th, 2019. Quote, I'm quoting now. I'm quoting what this letter reads. Number one, why I am speaking. The first video I saw from Seiko Woods was the interview of Delilah Mosley. To be honest, up until this video, I was still patiently waiting on that phone call from ABC leadership that allowed me to return to fellowship with them. There was always something off to me about the process, but I figured that was just their own process due to them not knowing how to handle particular situations. I defended this position to, fam to friends and family members as well. However, once I started watching the videos, it was very apparent that the handling of my situation was just quote unquote business as usual, end quote. And I was very apparent that the handling of my situation excuse me, was just business as usual and I was just waiting in vain. It says that it made me very angry, very sad at the same time, because if someone would have told me this is how they have treated other people, I would not have believed them. I thought they genuinely cared and somehow it had made it make sense in my head enough to ignore the head shakes as I would tell my story to my friends and family. I mean, I didn't agree either. But also wasn't the head of the church of that church. So who was I to argue their process? Letter A, sub point A. I always strive to see the good in people, especially the ones I trust. I think it is important to speak a little bit about the type of person I am. And you'll see why this is important when I get to the story. I grew up very sheltered. I was in a church service almost every day of the week. And we moved so much that I actually changed schools 15 different times before I graduated high school. This essentially put me in the position of the quote unquote new kid multiple times in my childhood while also being shy. I had no friends. Briefly for about a year in high school, I tried to share that shyness and be a part of the crowd. But I still didn't really fit in. I got busy with a job and got married and moved away from home. I was still ignorant as to what was accepted as socially normal. Continuing on, I have to preface my story with this because I know that if I don't, my actions will be judged without the context of what was going through my head at the time. Let me also insert this trigger warning. I will be speaking about childhood molestation and that may upset some of you. So you may not want to hear any further until you are ready. During my childhood, I had experienced multiple instances of where I was exposed to others in a sexual manner, with my first occurrence being at age four. This is significant because I need you to hear my heart in this. I remember to this day so many details all the way down to the color of this grown man's underwear. I remember him telling me not to say anything and I didn't want to betray his trust. I also remember when I did tell I was embarrassed, not because of what had happened, but because I didn't know what to call his genitals. Yet it came about that I told my mother. 
The next thing I know, I was being taken to the hospital and police showed up at this man's house and I was asked by others multiple times if I was sure, as if my mother's words could be trusted. There was no evidence of penetration, so there was no reason for any of them to believe me, but my mother did. Fast forward. I had other occurrences where I was touched, etc., and I did not tell. One day my mother asked me if I had been touched by anyone and I could not bring myself to lie to her, so I shook my head, yes. She asked me, who? I named one name instead of the several that had existed. She then asked me if I wanted to tell the child's mother. At first, I was going to say no, but at that point, I thought that maybe she should know. I didn't know that that child would be talked to about it. I didn't know that the child would get in trouble for it. However, that is what happened. I was confronted by this child later in the week about how they got in so much trouble because I said something. And I tried to lie and deflect the guilt by saying someone else had said it. The other person then confronted me about the lying and all of the children ended up leaving me alone, sitting on the swing, uh, sitting on the swing set to play by myself. I have no recollection of how long I sat on that swing by myself, but I do know that was the last time I told my mother about any molestation or gave her any in indication that it has still been occurring. I didn't want that child to get in trouble. I just wanted the mother to have the knowledge. Even though things happened after that still, I never told a soul. And lastly, if I am upset with someone, I try to figure out in all the ways that I appreciate them. And I try to look at the positive repercussions of a given situation versus the negative ones in order to, say, to stay smiling. Because smiling through everything has always been my strength. Number two, why I would like anonymity. I'll be speaking on an occurrence of molestation, and I do not wish for my child's reputation to be revealed more than it has already. Some of you may have heard that something happened, while some may not have. Either way... Since this is on a public forum, I would like to protect my child's identity as much as possible. I know that the judging of my actions will occur, and I'm okay with that. Three, premarital counseling. Let's fast forward to when I was preparing to marry my second husband, Jeremy. We went to three different pastors to receive premarital counseling. One was the pastor of the church we attended. The second was his nephew to officiate our wedding. And the third was, of course, going to be our new pastor once we had moved to DFW area uh, to attend ABC. The first two gave us their advice and biblical guidance for free. Pastor Lewis, pastor Lewis charged us three hundred dollars in total for three one hundred excuse me for three one hour sessions, one hundred dollars each. We happily paid it in exchange for his time. The first time we met with him, he was getting to know us and our background. All he had to hear from me was that I grew up under a female pastor and he already knew, quote unquote, I was a Jezebel. But it didn't seem much, it didn't seem like much else mattered uh, about me. I told him about my first marriage and how my first husband had shot at me. And he said that he was crazy, quote unquote, and that he that he didn't even consider what we had a marriage. This is important because he also told me he would have told me to go back to him and reconcile otherwise. I don't want to go too much into detail because it would take forever. So fast forward. The second session is where he met with us separately. After talking to Jeremy, they came out of the room and he looked at me and told me that we needed to have a conversation before we move forward with the third session. Please note, this was the extent of what he said about this next issue. Once we got in the car, Jeremy started it up and asked me where I wanted to go eat. I wanted to have this conversation, which was so important. I could tell he was nervous, but tried to be as understanding as I could. He told me, uh, he told me that when he was a child, he had touched some of his younger cousins inappropriately and got caught. My immediate thought went back to my previous experiences with other children who turned out to be God-fearing, loving adults, raising beautiful children who had never had to deal with anything like that at all in their childhood. So for me, I figured he would be perfect for understanding why it was so important to keep my daughter safe. My words to him 
or something along the lines of, quote unquote, that was in the past or something like that. It never occurred to me that he would ever be sexually attracted to a child as an adult man with an available wife. When we went back in for our third session, Pastor Lewis made the comment, quote, wow, she must really love you, end quote. When we told him that we were going to move forward with the marriage, then he made some other statements about some issues we might have to work through in our marriage, and we were finished with the counseling sessions. Number four, the offense. I believe, if my memory serves me correctly, that I had come home from a P31 Christmas wake party in early December 2017. 2017. P31 stands for Proverbs 31. Um, and it says, I state this because my daughter was homeschooled and I was a stay-at-home mom. So I was with my child 24-7 except for the once-a-month P31 meeting for a few hours. She came with me to everything else. Back to the story. I came home. She played in my hair and eventually I put her to bed. However, as I was tucking her in this night, she let me know that her stepdad touched her inappropriately. I don't believe the details are what is important here, so I will refrain. I also won't go into everything I felt in that moment, but I know immediately that the urge to harm him, I calmed myself and asked her if she was sure. She was not upset. She just wanted me to know so maybe I could make him stop. I told her I would talk to him about it, kissed her on her forehead, and headed downstairs. Jeremy was laying on the bed, already asleep. So I sat at the foot of the opposite side of the bed and woke him saying we needed to have a conversation. He laid there, asked me, what's up, quote unquote. I told him what she had said and the room was just silent. After a few moments, I asked, quote, do you, you, you don't have anything to say, end quote, to which he simply replied, no. I asked again. And he responded, I did it. This is where I would tell you that was going on in my head. I thought of multiple ways to end his life. And then I thought about my daughter. How she would feel knowing that he died because she said something after he had told her not to. How she would feel if her mother was in jail. Then I thought about the fact that I couldn't kill him. That was murder. What would be the Christian thing for me to do? I had no tools or experience to help me through the situation. I didn't know what to do. Furthermore, I didn't have a job. How was I going to provide for us after not having a job for almost three years? I don't remember much else about that night aside from crying, not wanting to see his face, hear his voice, or even smell him. So I went back upstairs and cried and held my baby and prayed. I couldn't call my family. I know I actually could have because they because that would be getting them involved in my marriage. I didn't call anyone. I was going to call or text Mr. Lewis, then I decided to email him. This was trauma. I didn't want to interrupt anything his family may have had going on, or if they were asleep or anything like that. I was just trying to be considerate. I figured an email would be easiest because he would likely be in a mode to reply versus getting interrupted while he was in the middle of something else. I had his personal email, but it was in a notebook tucked away at the top of my closet downstairs in the room where I did not want to be. So I went to the website and used the contact me box. And because I used the website, I did not have a copy of this email, nor could I reply to it, uh, reply to it later or edit it or anything. I couldn't even read what I had written. I can get a copy from the police station now that the case is closed, by the way. For the next few days or so, I would wake up before he would wake and me and my daughter would leave the house and we would come back in the house long after he would have been asleep. Late nights and early rises to avoid him completely. Eventually, eventually, though, one day he stayed up until almost two in the morning to catch us coming home. I put her to bed and agreed to hear what he had to say. He threw some scriptures at me and apologized. I don't really know what all he said because I honestly was not really listening. I just know somehow over the next few weeks, 
I had gotten to the point of burying my negative emotions and putting on a face to everyone else like everything was fine at home. Also, I did not let him know that I had sent an email and, and he told me that he would initiate a conversation to talk to the pastor about it. I believe it was like one or two Sundays later when Mr. Lewis was making his way through the church after service when he asked me if everything was all right. I still didn't know if he had read the email or not, and I didn't know how to pull him to the side in the middle of everyone trying to hug him and meet him. So my answer was, I'm good. This happened twice. Both times I was wondering if he had gotten the email or if Jeremy had reached out. I asked Jeremy maybe three different times and then gave up on it. At this point, I'm thinking that maybe there was a reason he hadn't found that email. Maybe I can figure this out on my own. My daughter seemed content with what had happened, but I knew I would have to tell her father about this. And that was a nightmare. I was nowhere near prepared to face. I would like to add that I did end up asking Miss Sabatha for advice without telling her all that happened. And her advice was, quote, sometimes you just have to live as roommates for a while, end quote. I thought that was interesting because that was exactly how we had been living. So much so that my daughter actually asked me why I wasn't sleeping in my bed and that her stepdad was probably really lonely and I should go sleep in the bed with him. Moving on. Number five, the shunning. Now, fast forward to April 7, 2018. I had sent the letter during the first week in December. So this is four months later. Jeremy received a text stating that pastor and the elders would like to meet with us. So we go up there and there are police waiting in the back for him. They had me and my daughter wait outside while they talked to him in the conference room. Mr. Lewis came out and told me he had gotten my email and that the reason he hadn't seen it, it was because it had gotten lost in his spam folder. He then went on to tell me that we were going to have to leave the church and were not going to be allowed to come back until all of this got settled. I felt like my heart was being ripped out of my chest. Not only was this one of the most traumatic things I had never thought I would have to experience, but now I just lost the support and communication of the only group of people I had ever let my guard down fully with. This was my family. These were my friends. Now, when I'm at my weakest point in my, ch in my adulthood, all form of support was being ripped from me. I even told him I had wished we would have had found that he would never have found that email. The police did not arrest him. They sent us home and they said that they would forward the report to the correct jurisdiction. So we went home and they arrived the next day to arrest him and take him to jail. CPS also came to start the investigation. There are a lot of details in this part of the story, but for the sake of time, I will skip over all of that. You see, I will skip over all of that happened that day. However, that night, my daughter did ask where her stepdad was. I told her that he had to take care of some business and he would be gone for 30 days, the length of time that the restraining order had been set to. She cried for him because... She didn't get to tell him bye before he left and she was going to miss him. Fast forward to May. I was invited out to the movies by a sister who had information about what had happened. She figured we could use some time out of the house and she was right. So we went to the theater and there were other ladies from ABC in attendance. After the show, we all took a picture together. It ended up on social media somewhere, I guess, because I got a text from Aaron Lewis I believe, asking if I could come in and talk to the pastor after service at 1 p.m. I thought he was calling me to find out the progress on the case. I was wrong. He had called me in to tell me that he had seen the photo and that I shouldn't be hanging out with ABC members so as not to get them involved in the case. He then went on to say other things like he was getting investigated and he hadn't even done anything. He also stated, quote, I told you about him when I was counseling you guys. I married y'all, end quote. But what kind of broke my heart a little was that I kept pleading with them and they still offered no advice besides leave. Miss Sabetha turned to me and told me that I wasn't innocent in all of this. 
Of course, I'm already feeling guilty about this whole situation, but I still to this day don't fully understand what she meant by that. She also said that she had seen some evidence that my daughter had been exposed to something sexual when dealing with the other children. When I recanted that no one had told me, she stated that Jeremy had been told. I don't remember which one of them said that my daughter would probably hate Jesus and is likely mad at me due to how I handled the situation, but I do remember it being said. I also remember Ken Rose answered my I didn't know what to do, quote unquote, plea with a crime has been committed and there are legal ramifications to go along with that, quote unquote. I left even more confused than the first time I had been, quote unquote, put on leave. Miss Sabatha did give me a bit of advice. She reminded me that ABC does not have a program for my situation, but I could try a different slash bigger church because they have programs for women in this type of situation. I could not do that. And I've been giving to and supporting this ministry for the last three plus years. How could I go to another church with my hand out asking for help and I had never even supported their ministry with a single attendance? She gave me a hug as she escorted me out and I had remembered I was supposed to be receiving or getting a recipe from Miss Anne Marie. Miss Sabatha told me to text her and ask her for it as if that was no big deal. However, when I text her, I received no message, no response, excuse me, not even a no. And she has in parenthesis, see below. And in the parenthesis here is a text message here between the person and Miss Anne Marie regarding the, uh, the recipe. So I'll fast forward to number six. Number six, communication. Communications. May 1st, 2018. CPS advised me that they were closing the case and I texted Mr. Lewis to see if I would be able to return to service. He responded in a group message that I assumed include Mr. Ken Rose and Mr. Aaron Lewis. I didn't have their number saved in my phone. See conversations below. And in next, the next uh, page here, we have text message conversations here between the individual who wrote this letter and G. Craig, Aaron Lewis, and uh, it says uh, Ken Rose in a group conversation right here. Next page here as well. All of these are text conversations that she has asking about the, the status of her membership and when, uh, when will she be able to return. May 6th, the text I received after going to the movies the night before, I tried to understand. I really did. I thought as I sat with it that I would start to make sense, that it would start to make sense, but it never did. About a month later, I was looking for someone to come and fix my back door. The police had forced their way in while I was out, uh, when I, while I was out at an appointment to confiscate all of my electronics. In doing so, they destroyed my entire frame and also separated my bricks from my wall outside. While I was looking for someone, it occurred to me that I could possibly have one of the guys that did carpentry work at the church to fix it, since I trusted them. We talked back and forth briefly on Messenger, and then the conversation just fell off completely. Three days later, I let them know that I had found a contractor, and they viewed the message, but again, no response. I was a woman sleeping with my daughter in a house whose back door wasn't secure, and I couldn't even get a response for help that I was willing to pay for. Number seven, my daughter. I am grateful that Jeremy is no longer part of our lives. However, my daughter was very regretful during the process. Let me see something here. Okay. Um, I'm very grateful that Jeremy is no longer part of our lives. However, my daughter was very regretful during the process. Near, near the end of April, she had started counting down the days until Jeremy would be returning to us. And I finally had to tell her that she wasn't returning, that he wasn't returning, excuse me. 
She cried so hard. This reaction led me to know that I understood my daughter just as well as I thought I had. In spite of everything that I was told, she asked, quote, why can't we just forgive him? End quote. I responded that she could forgive him, but he couldn't come back. She asked why he couldn't just be punished for doing, quote unquote, the dishes for a month or something. But I still had to restate that he couldn't return. My baby was heartbroken. This was why it was so hard for me to harm him. She loved him and I was right. She just wanted him to stop. This was what I was searching for help in dealing with. Number eight, my sisters. I love these women of God because they would never know how much just the fact that they checked on me meant. I was alone and trying to make it as best I could. There were nine total women who texted and called me back to check on me. I did not tell them what had happened, just that something had happened and that I would be gone for a while. If they ever hear this story, I would love to give a special thanks to them for the strength they lent me in prayer and just genuine care. There was one who actually kept up with the phone calls and another who actually sold a financial gift in my direction. I also must add, there was a brother who also checked on us, but he didn't realize we had separated at the time and he was just trying to get in touch with Jeremy, but he still deserves a mention. These people reached out when the very people that knew how deeply I was hurting never even picked up the phone once or gave us a, th a second thought. This has been a very hard transition. Number nine, my help. The only person outside of my family that understood my actions was my child's father. Surprisingly, as upset as he was with me for not telling him back in December when, when, it, when it had happened, he understood the severity and struggle I had with trying to figure out how to deal with the situation. Even more, he was the main person who helped me not to spiral deeper into depression behind everything going on. The significant thing about, all, about this is he doesn't even believe in the Bible, yet he showed me more grace than anyone else. Mr. Lewis had also, Mr. Lewis had called him crazy, yet he didn't turn his back on me. He didn't try to take our child from me. Instead, he buckled down and did everything he could to try to help me in every way that he possibly could think of. I think it important to point out that he was hurting too. This was his baby that was that was harmed in this way too. But I say all this to say that I don't think that the way my situation was handled was right. I also do not appreciate he has treated other brothers and sisters in Christ. How do we help one another if we shun them in their time of need? End quote. Um, <clears throat> give me a minute, please. Just give me a minute. We need to say this. Let me just say this. Some of you want to know. You, you want to know why. I'm not going to stop. Dealing with G. Craig Lewis. It's because of this. Because of this. 
that's why I'm not going to stop. Because of what this sister has gone through and several other people have gone through. That's why I'm not going to stop. The only way I'm going to stop, the only way I'm going to stop is if G. Craig Lewis shuts his ministry down and steps down. But if he doesn't, I'm going to stay on him. With every fiber of my being, I'm going to stay on him. I got four daughters. I couldn't even imagine. I couldn't even imagine somebody touching my daughters like that. I couldn't imagine it. And the thing that kills me, aside from the fact, <clears throat> aside from the fact, aside from the fact that a so-called church is not willing to help people deal with trauma like this, is that you have a man void of the spirit of God who showed more restraint than a professing pastor that claims to be a Christian that claims to have the spirit of God and a wife of a pastor who claims to have the spirit of God. That's what kills me. This man, though made in the image of God, showed more grace and compassion in that situation than a person who claims to be saved and showed zero compassion. So, this letter deserved its, deserved its own life today. James chapter 2, verse 13. Judgment will be merciless to the one who shows no mercy. G. Craig Lewis showed no mercy to this woman. Aaron Lewis showed no mercy to this woman. Ken, whatever his name is, Show no mercy. Ken Rose showed no mercy to this woman. And some of you want me to show mercy to him? Some of you want me to back off from him? A spiritual terrorist? A wolf? You want me to show mercy to him? A predator? A savage? What about the people like this woman suffering? What about the people that I talk to almost every day? What about the people that are struggling right now? What about those people? What about those people? What are we to say to those people if I had to back off? Or I would to step away and step down? What are we to say to those people? What am I to say to, to a Delilah Mosley? What am I to say to her? What am I to say to, to a Kelly Sosa? What am I to say? What am I to say to a Larnell Mar uh, Marion or Lavina Marion? What am I to say to these people? What am I to say to a Loretta White and her family, her husband? What am I to say to these people? I just saw a picture that my brother Lonell posted up that they had a kind of could say a reunion, had dinner with members that left ABC. And you know what all of them had in common? You want to know what all they had in common? What they had in common was they were they were all affected and abused and mistreated. But I guess they're all lying, right? I guess they're lying. They, yeah, they, they got to be lying. 
I, I would wonder what all of you call these people liars in their faith. Those of you who, who are watching this live right now, those of you who are, who are attending ABC, you know, Jay Bryan, you're probably there. I probably see you too. Gamete Sosa, you're probably watching. G. Craig, you're probably definitely watching because you're you a liar. You are a bald-faced liar. You know you watch social media. A month ago, you said you didn't. Last week, you admitted that you did. So you're just a walking lie. But you know what? The funny thing about this situation, in a sad sense, though, some of you have more compassion for the wolf, for the predator, than those who are their prey. And I say this to your shame. I say this to your shame. Every time I read this letter, it breaks my heart. Every time. Because people should not have to deal with that. People should not have to go to a church to be treated the way that they've been treated. But some of you, you look at me as being hard. You look at me as being terse. You look at me as being heavy handed against a person like G. Craig, oh, by the, who, by the way, made millions off of doing the same thing that I'm kind of doing to him right now. So let me give y'all some verses real quick and then I'm gonna let y'all go. Because I'm trying to be submissive to the spirit of God in this. Some of you have, have complained. Because I've seen your comments. Some of you have complained about the about the mocking and about the uh, sarcasm and, and, and all these things that, that are now pointing at George's way now. I'm going to say one part before I before I get back to this to my statement about George and, and the sock and the sarcasm and the mocking. I posted that video up regarding G. Craig Lewis and the inappropriate relationships he's been having, and some of them have been sexual because there's been proof on that. There's a hard drive of that. There, there, there's proof on that. Um, but the video that I posted up with this with the lady, I want to encourage all of you. I want to encourage all of you. Let's not focus on the woman. Let's focus on the man. Let's focus on the man that was videotaping the woman that was not his wife. Focus on him, not her. Let's not make the jokes about her. I ain't having a problem if you if you mock and if you jeer and if you ridicule and if you use satire and sarcasm against him. Because you know why? Number one, it's biblical. What did you say, Seiko? You heard what I said. It's biblical. You got to show me book chapter verse. I'll show it to you. Besides on the top of my head, I'll show it to you right here. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one. There's a time and place for everything under the sun. Everything has a time and a place. It's a time to mock. It's a time not to mock. It's a time to jeer. It's a time not to, it's time not to jeer. It's a time to ridicule. It's a time not to ridicule. It's a time to laugh. It's a time not to laugh. It's a time to use satire. It's a time not to use satire. You know what? Now is the time. And you know to who? To G. Craig Lewis. Why? Because he's done it to people for the past 20 years. That's how he made his money. Mocking people. Humiliating people. Talking about people. Blasting people. Calling people gay. That were not gay. He's made millions doing that. And now some of you want me to ease up. Some of you want me to tell people, oh, let's not talk about him. Let's, let's, we need to be praying for you. I don't pray for wolves. I put wolves down. I put wolves to sleep. That's what I do to wolves. I don't domesticate a wolf. I take wolves out. The Bible says there's a time and place for everything under the sun. Not only that, Jesus says in Matthew 7, verse 1 and 2, judge not, lest ye be judged, for, here's the reason why Jesus said it, because he put the four, the four clause in there, 
It's a because it's a purpose clause for the same measure or the same way you judge, you shall be judged. Is it possible, ladies and gentlemen, is it possible that Galatians 6, 7, and 8 is coming to pass? It's being rightly and properly fulfilled against G. Craig Lewis. What is Galatians 6, 7, and 8? Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that includes George Craig Lewis, that he shall also reap. For those who sow to the flesh shall from the flesh reap corruption. But those who sow to the spirit shall from the same spirit reap life and peace. His whole existence, as far as ministry is concerned, has been on mocking people. You see, some of y'all don't want that. Y'all want me to give grace to him while he gives none to the people who did anything to him. I'm not doing that. Well, who are you to, 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 to treat him like that? Who is Craig to treat people where he traded them? I am a biblical instrument of judgment against G. Craig Lewis. How about that? There's three realms and three institutions that God has ordained in this earth realm. The family, the church, and the state. And all three implement discipline in the jurisdiction and the spheres that they have been given authority over. And take a while, guess what I am. I'm part of the church. And since he has flunkies that don't hold him accountable because they don't have biblical eldership there, they have flunky yes men there, then he's not accountable to anybody. So we as the church hold him accountable by our departure. We, as a church, hold him accountable by our dollars and our pocketbooks. That's how you hold that sucker accountable. You draw back from him. You do what the scripture says, according to Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and 18. Mark those who cause divisions. Mark them. You call them out. You identify them. Mark those who cause divisions. And the Bible says, reason why you do that is because these men don't follow God. By their smooth and deceptive teaching, they lead people astray. I'm not making it. Let me just read it to y'all. Romans 16, 17, and 18. And this is not a suggestion. This is a command. Mark them. My brethren, I urge you, keep your eye. Mark those who cause divisions and hindrances contrary to the teaching which you have learned and turn away from them. Why? Turn away from them for such men are, are slaves, not of our Lord Jesus Christ, but of their own appetites and by their smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. G. Craig Lewis on Sunday, you would have thought that he would have, he would have repented. What does he do? He comes out of Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 through 19, talking about the seven deadly sins. And you know what? This man is so blind and so foolish, he doesn't even realize or maybe doesn't even care that he's talking about himself. Because those seven deadly sins, those seven abominations fit him to the T. But see, what he did was what Paul says in verse 18. By their smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. They don't tell the truth. What they do, they try to cover their sin by sprinkling a little bit of truth, but dousing it with lies. So, is there a time to mock? Does the Bible talk about mocking and using satire and ridicule? You better believe it does. Can I give you some examples? Glad you asked. First Kings 18, 27. Remember Elijah? Remember Elijah on Mount Carmel? 850 prophets of Baal. And they were crying out to their 
to their gods. And you know what Elijah said? He mocked them in verse 27. He says, hey, why don't y'all scream a little louder? Maybe, maybe, maybe your, your God is, is, you know, gone on a journey. And you know what else he said? Maybe your God is using the bathroom. Because the word in the Hebrew, gone aside, means, means to use the bathroom, to use the restroom. I believe it was 850, uh, Tim. I know it was 450 prophets of Baal. I thought he had 400 other ones too. But if it's, if it's 450, no problem. But I, I, I thought it was 850 because he had 400 prophets of Baal and, 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 and 400, 400 ones. But, uh, but I know it's 450 at, at least. But follow me on this point. Elijah mocks them. Elijah mocks them. So if it's wrong to mock people, then Elijah was sinning. Because he definitely did it. I'll give you another example. First uh, Kings chapter 22. I'll, I'll just read that one. Remember Micaiah? Micaiah? In his encounter with, with Ahab, Ahab, wickedest king that ever lived in Israel's history, the text says, let me see. I was trying to get something else. Excuse me, y'all. Okay. Yeah, 450. Thank you, uh, Tim. I, I was looking at something else. No, no, I'm, I'm right. Verse 19 in first in, in first Kings 18. Now send therefore and gather to me all Israel and Mount Carmel together with 450 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of the Asherah. So 850. I was correct. Uh, first Kings chapter uh, 22. I just want to read this real quick. Verse 15. Uh, of first Kings 22. He says, I'll say verse 13 for context. When the messenger who went to sign, went to summon Micaiah spoke to him saying, behold now, the words of the prophets are uniformly favorable to the king. Please let your word be like the word of one of them and speak favorably. But Micaiah said, verse 14, Micaiah said in verse 14, as the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me that I will speak, then when he came to the king, the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to Ramoth Gilead to battle or shall we refrain? This is, this is Ahab asking the question. He says, and he answered him, go up and succeed and the Lord will give it into the hand of the king. Then the king said to him, how many times must I adjure you to speak to me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Notice, he was already told not to go. And so Micaiah uses sarcasm. Micaiah mocks him. Yeah, go on ahead. Go ahead. Go on. Yeah, the guy to give it to you. It's, it, you. You can get the W. You can get the W. Micaiah mocks the king. Ridicules the king. Remember Paul? Remember Paul, what he said to the Corinthian church in 1 Corinthians 4, 8, and then, and then 2 Corinthians 12, 11 and 13? He, he, he mocks them. He mocks them. He said, oh yeah, you become full, you become this, you become that. Now, was that loving for Paul to say that? Yeah. Sometimes it's loving to use sarcasm. Sometimes it's loving to mock somebody for, to, for, to show how silly and how foolish and how stupid they are. And to also protect others to show them how stupid and how foolish they are. I'm just, I'm just showing y'all in scripture stuff. Some of y'all thinking that, oh, you know, we should mock G. Craig Lewis. Why not? He's getting what he deserves. He's getting what he deserves. He's reaping what he has sown for 20 years. Laughing and kicking at people, mocking them, questioning people's sexuality. He's done it for years. And now you want to tell me and tell others that we're wrong for doing the very thing that Craig has done to people. But we're doing it righteously. He did it unrighteously and he did it for profit i'm doing it for free you ain't got to pay me to clown him i will do it for free yes i'm going to clown him until god says enough you don't have to do it 
I'm not telling you how to do it. But whenever I feel the unction of the Holy Ghost, I'm going to do it. Just like Elijah did it. Paul did it. Even Jesus did it to the Pharisees. Called them blind guys and called them hypocrites and called them whitewashed tombs and said, you, you swallow, you, 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 you strain at a gnat and swallow a camel. So I'm, I'm standing on good ground when it comes to mocking people who mock our Lord, because I just read to you Galatians 6, 7. God will not be mocked. God uses people to judge people. People understand that. Can we for once get in our Bibles and say, you know what? Let's see what the Bible says about this. Let's see what thus saith the Lord says about this. Instead of us going on our feelings, let's go on the flawless word of God and let the word of God speak to our souls. How about that? Can we start there for a change? So you want me to ease up, to back off of a man that who has made his living and made millions on getting on the necks of people like Kirk Franklin, T.D. Jakes, <laughs> Eddie Long when he was alive, Yolanda Adams, Donnie McClurkin. You name it, this man has mocked people. And yet you want me to back off? I'm not backing off. I'm not going to back off until he steps down. I'm going to stay on him until he is gone. This man, reports have told me that when Tone, who goes by the name now of uh, B. Slade, you know he's 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 uh, fully homosexual. He he in his in his own sarcastic way, I guess you could say, he thanked EX Ministries. Okay, thank y'all. Y'all did your job. Okay, y'all got me. Yeah, whatever, whatever. They gloated over that. G. Craig gloated over that at that time. This man talked about any and everybody that was popular and still is. Listen, apart from him getting ready to do True Behind Hip Hop 13, which is canceled. Thank you, Lord. He hit him in his pockets. He told his people that he had to cancel it. I'm glad you canceled it, Craig. I'm glad you canceled it. There's answer to prayer. He talks about Kanye West, mocked Kanye West, said Kanye West is not a Christian. Um, I mean, just 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 attack this man ruthlessly. But y'all are acting as though he deserves a pass. He deserves grace. I'm not giving a wolf grace. He gets none of it from me because he gave none of it to anyone. Now, all of a sudden, he wants to talk about love, love, love. Forgive, forgive, forgive. Yeah, I know why you're talking about it now, Craig, because you see the walls closing in on you now. Yeah, we, we, know, we know you're getting scared. And I hope you get scared to death. Because, see, people like you, people like G. Craig, they have to learn the hard way. They, they, may, they may have to go the route of Proverbs 29, verse 1. I'll read it so that way you can have it in your, in your hearing. I won't just recite it. I'll just read it to you. It says, a man after much reproof, the Bible says, hardens his neck, shall suddenly be destroyed beyond remedy. That's very scary. You know what that means? That means there comes a time when God says, that's it. I'm done talking to you. I'm done sending warning signs and warning shots. I'm, I'm tired of giving people chance after chance after chance. And they think because they're under this age and dispensation of grace that they can just mess over my grace. And I'm not a God of holiness. I'm not a God of wrath. I'm not a God of justice. I'm not a God of vengeance. I'm not a God of recompense. He says here, a man who hardens his neck. This is what Craig does. God ain't hardening. He says a man who hardens his neck after much reproof, after much warning, 
after much people talking and trying to get in contact with him and trying to call him and email him and saying, hey, man, we need to talk. We used to talk before. Why are you not talking to me now? He says, after much reproof, will suddenly. It is a promise. People want to claim the promises of God. Claim this is a promise. God says it's a promise. You keep hardening your neck. You keep being hard headed. God says, I'm going to break you and I'm going to break you beyond remedy. I've had reports tell me. That he's been confronted. By a very well known pastor in the uh, Texas area. Let's put it that way. Warning him. To step down, warning him to repent that it's going to only get worse for you if you don't. This dude, Seiko Woods, ain't playing with you. He has receipts on you, Doc. His answer? I can't do that. I can't do that. I have too many followers. That's Proverbs 29, 1, Kev. He was told, warned again, repent, confess, step down from the pastorate. It's only going to go worse for you. His answer, I can't do that. I got too many people following me. <laughs> you know what? That's it. That's it. See, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be playing with, with y'all. With this man, I'm going to tell y'all how he feels about people who support him, quote unquote. See, Will Ford, if you're watching the Havilland, if you're watching, he don't like you. He never liked you. He calls Will Ford gay. Calls Will Ford stupid for marrying the Havilland. And some of y'all know I'm not lying. So you can testify right now. Tell me if I'm lying. You know I'm not lying. He talks about Will Ford like a dog and Will Ford goes to the same church that he has talked to this, that this man has talked to him like a dog about and preaches for him. How do you do that? Yeah, absolutely, April. Yeah, forget what scripture said. He has followers. So his followers are more important that they follow him instead of him following God and taking this as a warning shot. I'm just telling you. So those seven deadly, seven abominable sins that G. Craig, quote unquote, called himself trying to preach and teach about at his church last Sunday. That's going to come back around on him. Yes, he called. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yep, yep, he did. Yep, she did. Lana, yep, yep, he called Will gay. Yes, he did. You know, he calls every man gay that, that decides to do things apart from what he agrees with. They're gay. They're, they're weak, you know. Yeah. So this, this is, this is, this is what this man is on. So Will, Will Ford, brother, the Havilland, if you're watching this video or somebody tags you in this video, don't get mad at me. Stop supporting people who are dragging you. This man does not care about you. He does not care about your husband. So instead of pulling your videos down, how about not putting videos up that contradict what you've been saying about this man for weeks? You know this man is no good. You know this. Help your husband to stop supporting him. It's amazing to me that y'all talk about what the Spirit of God is showing you and what God is telling you in your, in your spirit, and in your belly, but God ain't showing you in his word how to stay away from people who say one thing and not do. I mean, come on. I mean, miss me with all this mystical stuff. Do I believe God speaks? Yeah, I believe. But I believe he speaks to his word first. And then he speaks to people and situations. That's how he does it. You got all these signs that are, that are coming in your face and you don't see this? That you're being played? But that check though. 
Yeah, but that check that I get from speaking over there, though. See, whatever you love, that's what you're going to follow. That's what you're going to worship. Somebody let Will, Will Ford know this. Please, share this video with that brother. Will, stop playing yourself. You and your wife should know better. Why would you support a man that does, does not support and stand for what God stands for? Why would you do that? Why would you cause other people to follow you and support a man who does not believe in the scriptures being the final authority? Who does, does not believe that baptism is one of the commands that believers are to be once they get saved? He just started baptizing people two months ago, but he does not believe in baptism. He believed that baptism is a Roman Catholic ritual. That's why he didn't baptize anybody for almost eight years. This man is wicked. Okay. I'm not going to let up on this man. I'm not going to shut up so he can send whoever he wants to send. Those wax cease and desist letters. Please miss me with that. I have my team too. So I'm, I'm going to treat you like a bill collector. I'm not going to answer your call because D-rated, Better Business Bureau, D minus rating. G. Craig, what are you smoking, sir? You have millions of dollars in your account. You drive a foreign or you're leasing one, but nonetheless, you're driving one. Um, and the best you can do to try to shut me up is to hire, quote unquote, a, what is this? What, what are these people called? Oh, uh, let me see. <sighs> Digital Forensics Corps. Digital Forensics Corps. Based out of Ohio. I live in Texas. So do you. You, 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 this is what you, this is what you send for me? A flunking, failing, better business rating, D minus rating, almost 50 complaints, only been in existence for, for three years. The lawyer that you supposedly is a lead detective, a lead investigator, has only been in law for four. This is, this is what you, this is what you, this is what you're doing? For, for 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 little old me now now George remember you said in your your little your little talk that there's just some guy on social media so this some guy on social media got you shook George I mean this is what we're doing I'm just asking because again if you you know yeah yeah um I mean if I wasn't a problem then why would you you know why would you worry about it I'm just curious to see how your people are gonna respond tomorrow since that video dropped. But, but more more interestingly for me, I want to know what George is going to do tomorrow. Because here's the thing, ladies and gentlemen. If George comes in that in that in that church tomorrow and acts as though everything is just everything, or he tries to make excuses and he does not confess that he has been having sex with women that are not his spouse and he's been doing this for years. But just got exposed now. That should tell us a lot of you people that still attend ABC something. That the very thing that he tried to hold you to, he's not doing. You know the whole Romans 2 1? You know? Yeah. I, I, I agree, Tisha. I, I don't believe he's going to repent. And God can do it. He, if God grants some repentance, it, it could happen. But I strongly, I would not bet the farm on it. I would not bet the farm that he would. Because it's pride precedes his humility. So I think I'm I think I'm pretty much uh, done. Um sarcasm has its place. Mocking has its place. There's a season for it. And that season that we are in regarding G. Craig Lewis is now. For me, it is. For me, it is. It's, it's now. 
A a exactly, Anisha. Exactly. Yep, this could have been over a long time ago. But yes, he did. Yes, absolutely, Delilah. Yep. So, people... And, and, if, and if she does, <laughs> if she does, that should tell you something right there. But, one more thing. Um... Um, I'm not praying for G. Craig Lewis. You do what you want to do, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not praying for G. Craig Lewis. I, I don't pray for wolves. I pray that God protects the sheep from them. That's what I pray for. Man, you're not even gonna pray for him? No, I don't consider Craig a brother. He's a wolf. I, I, I don't. My concern is zero for that man. My concern is zero for his family. Zero. My concern is zero for those who support him, those who are closely uh, associated with him and that stand with him. It is zero. Zero. I have no concern for him at all. None. Let the record, let the record reflect and show that. I'm telling you here right now, I do not concern myself with a wolf. No more than I would concern myself with a ravage and with a savage animal or beast. Now, you do what you want to do. You can call me arrogant and say that I'm being unloving. Call it what you want. But holler at me when somebody breaks into your house and wants to rape your wife and children. Then come talk to me and see how you... And let, let me know that you just have them come over some, for some milk and cookies. And just talk to him about, hey, you know, there's a better way to break into people's houses, Mr. Robber, Mr. Murderer, than to kick in people's door in and, and things like that. Let's see how you would handle that then. But see, you wouldn't have that same attitude in, in, in the physical, but you want people to have that in the, in, the, in the spiritual. You want people to coddle terrorists. You want people to coddle wolves. You want people to, to try to domesticate and reform unreasoning animals like, like G. Craig. That's what, that's what the Bible calls them. I'm just saying what the scripture says. You know, the whole Second Peter 2 thing. Unreasoning animals. So why would I pray for a person who prays on the sheep? No, no, no. I pray that those who prey on the sheep be stopped. That's what I pray for. You know, Jeremiah was told not to pray for these people. Not to pray for those who are rebellious. Not to pray for those who are steeped in idolatry. Not to pray for those who are wicked and refuse to repent. God told Jeremiah, stop praying. Get up off your knees. Don't pray for these people. I don't care. Listen. They could, they could, they could be praying, and 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 they can have Moses intercede for them. I will not hear them. Some of y'all, hey, listen. Some of y'all be like, that's harsh. But you know what? It's harsh. You know, you know, it's much more harsh for us to sit back and let God's people be taken advantage of, and we say nothing. That's that's more harsh. That's unloving. So, um, when is enough enough? Here's, here's, here's when I'll stop. Here's when I'll stop. I will stop when G. Craig Lewis steps down and shuts down his ministry. And that includes the DVDs that he's been selling, whereby he's been talking about slamming people, defaming people, Making these false accusations where people's lives have now been affected. What about these people? What if they, what if they have changed? What, let's just say, what if just those, those people that have changed their life for the better, for the glory of God, and you still selling these old DVDs about how they used to live? You, you've, never, you've never amended anything. You've never made any corrections to anything because you don't believe you're wrong about anything. So that's the deal for me. I'll, I'll shut I'll shut my mission and my operation down when he shuts his down first. He go first. Quid pro quo. Quid pro quo. Because then if he shuts his down, then my work is done. But as long as he continues to do what he's doing, you're going to constantly see me. You will see my face every single time. It's like tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. I will be on Larry Reed's show. Larry Reed Live. 
I'll be there discussing these issues and then some with people who are in support of seeing G. Craig Lewis shut down. So tomorrow night, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, any questions before I before I run before I get up out of here? Um, get the get the alarm on that. Okay, um, that's my heart on that. That's 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 where I'm at. Um, does he brought? I, I don't. I'm not sure. That, this would be my first time. This would be my first time on the uh, on that show, Yoli. Um, thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining my live. Appreciate that. Um, this has been my first time actually going on his uh, on his show. Have I heard from any members? Yes, ma'am, I have. Yes, ma'am, I have. I have people. I have, I've, I've gotten a few emails uh, from people here. Uh, let's see if I can find one because uh, my emails have been kind of full. So let's see if I can find a name that may have, not not necessarily a name, but an email that um, that I received. Um, I'll paraphrase what one of them said. Uh, they wanted to know more about. Uh, the email that I had uh, uh, put out because they do not believe that what G. Craig Lewis has been saying is true. That's what they said. That, um, let me see. Uh, let me see what else. <sighs> um, See if I can find one. If not, I, but I'm, I'm. That's yeah, but that's that's pretty much that, that's been the gist of it. But I, yes, I have, I have. Uh, um, well, to, yeah, to, well, tonight. I mean, tomorrow night, you know, he's. I guess it's gonna be a special show because I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be on with him uh, tomorrow night at six uh, central. But anyway, um, but there have been there have been current members um, that have. Um, that have, that have said, yeah, we're not, we're not, there's too much, there's too much out there now. Yes, I have. Yes, yes, I have. I was responding to uh, Loretta's uh, question too, uh, Andrea. Uh, I have uh, um, heard from current members and uh, some have asked me, um, um, do I have any information that would help to make a better decision on what to do? Cause some have been in, in limbo. Uh, most of them, others have been like, you know, we've, we've seen, we've heard enough. This is just a nail in the coffin. This has just been confirmation that we need to be out up out of here. Uh, so you said, how can I get one of those hats? Uh, e uh, inbox me. Inbox me, Benjamin. Inbox me. I'll, I'll send you the uh, the photo catalog of uh, of the merchandise we have. And I'll have my uh, accounts uh, specialist. Uh, she'll, she will uh, assist you in getting that um, in getting that merchandise to you. So I uh, appreciate the support. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. Um, any, any, anybody else? Any other questions? Any other questions? Uh, again, tomorrow night, six o'clock Central Standard Time. Uh, I think Larry's going to put a put a, um, a link uh, up maybe sometime this evening, if not tomorrow. But I know he mentioned that. So um, looking forward to to having that um, having that discussion. So um, as well. Also. Let me uh, say this. Uh, if you uh, has his wife said anything, uh, not to my knowledge, not to my knowledge. Um, um, if you are in the Dallas Fort Worth area and you're needing to find a church to attend, uh, I know some of you are in limbo. I know some of you have yet to uh, um have yet to uh, find a church or have yet to go to a church because of what has happened to you. And I understand that um, again, you know, Ephesians, I mean, uh, Ecclesiastes 3 is a time and a place. There's a time to, you know, to, to, to go and there's a time just to sit and wait. Um, so I think, uh, but I don't, I don't think that you should wait forever. I mean, of course, be prayerful about that. Be prayerful of how you um, look for another church, but there are some churches out there. Um, there are some churches out there. Um, and so, uh, you have, uh, Arlington Bible church, I believe pastor Dwight McKissick, um, that's his church. You can check him out. Uh, one community church. Uh, you can check out that church. I think they have, uh, different campuses. 
Uh, you can you can check out those uh, churches as well. I've also have have, have mentioned um, you can go to Nine Marks, the number nine, the word marks with an S dot org. Uh, they have a church search site uh, in their on their page. You just click on that uh, church search link, uh, type in either your zip code or they have a uh, map of our nation, and you can click the area where you live, and they should be able to assist you in and helping you find a church that teaches. Uh, verse by verse biblical exposition um, as well. Or you can just Google, you can just Google um, expository churches in my area and you should be able to find some um, churches for you as, as well. Now, I mentioned these churches, uh, I'm not endorsing them. I mean, they're, they're, they, 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 we have some doctrinal differences, but they're not, they're not heretical. Um, I, I'll, I'll say that much. They're not heretical. Uh, there may be some things you may not agree with, so I, but I would rather you go somewhere then to go to ABC and not go anywhere because you need to be, you need to be in a community of believers uh, where you can, where you can grow, where you can be healed, where you can establish relationships um, and, and, and just have, just have the fellowship of other, of other, other saints, um, you know, because you don't want to say, you know, you don't want to say to yourself and, and, and constantly lick your own wounds. Why don't you have somebody, let somebody help you. Um, let somebody help you uh, get those wounds healed. So, uh, let me read this question here. You say, what is your advice for those that are transitioning out of this situation? What steps should they take to heal properly so they don't remain hurt, bitter, or offended because healing is a process? Yeah. So kind of like what I just mentioned before, uh, Yoli, um, I think accountability is, is key. Um, you know, to, to isolate yourself because of pain uh, doesn't deal with that because you, you don't have anyone to, to bounce off of. And you don't have anyone to uh, help you uh, process uh, what you are, uh, what you're going through. So I think that that, you know, uh, being around other people um, helps you um, helps you heal. It's, it's for me, I believe that that's one of the that's one of the reasons why, you know, the writer of Hebrews tells us don't forsake the assembling of ourselves together for such as the habit of some, because there, there, there's a special grace, I believe, that comes when you are, you know, when you are together uh with other with other believers um doesn't mean that god is not with you if you don't go it just means that you know you you miss out on some on some very special uh indescribable uh moments when you are able to be uh in a fellowship with other believers uh but you but you're not so um but again i know things have have time to transition out um but i think that you know uh, being being connected with somebody or or having someone in your life you know, the Proverbs says in, in, in Proverbs 20, verse five, you know, the heart of man is like a deep well, but a man of understanding draws it out. So you, you, you need to have somebody that you'd be able to bounce some things off of. Just be able to hear, have you to, to, to consider some things, um, help you to, to process things that's going on in your heart and in your mind, because you don't want to just be talking to yourself. You don't want to be talking, talking to yourself. I mean, because you, you can listen, you can you can rationalize yourself out of a lot of things. And also you can rationalize yourself into a lot of things that you should be doing. So, you know, you need to have somebody that iron sharpening iron, uh, even through that, that, that transitioning and, and, and painful process. You know, my wife and I, our, our family, we, we, we're, we're attending a church. We haven't officially joined, but we're attending a church right now. Um, and we left our former church for doctrinal reasons. But we, we, we've been going to this church for a couple of months now um, and, and we like it. But we want to take our we want to take our time before we commit to any uh, fellowship. But notice we just didn't not go. You know what I'm saying? I guess maybe because I've been been on this road before. You know, with churches and 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 so I kind of deal with you know church hurt or deal with you know situation that can look like abuse it may not be just be time where you just know what for the sake of peace it's best that we leave. You know because if we stay here it's only going to make situations and matters worse. So for the sake of unity and peace. It's best that we part ways. Those those are those are good biblical reasons to do that because we know God is not a God of confusion, but a God of peace, a God of order. So hopefully that answers your question on that. Uh, you have to have a church yet. I'm not sure you're talking about me, but I, I think I answered that one. Uh, what else? I'm just scrolling up here, making sure I don't miss anybody's um, question. Okay. So, um, yeah, you can, yeah, um, that's fine. I, I'm not sure who I, Rob, 
Rob Green, but he sounds familiar. I'm not really sure if I recall that name, but sounds familiar. That's fine. Um, those who want to check it out, you can just use the sermon with that. But anyway, um, that's all I have to say, y'all. That's all I have to say. Just wanted to just, you know, do this live. Uh, make sure that, you know, you all heard my heart. I hope and pray that you did. Um, um, pray for those people who are still at ABC. My wife and I, we pray for these people every single day. We pray that God will deliver. We pray that God will open eyes. We pray that God will even bring G. Craig Lewis to the end of himself. He said, how long have I known about this? Uh, known about what? Um, G. Craig's sexual sins? Uh, I just I just found out about these things a couple months ago. A couple months ago. The doctrinal issues, uh, I've been knowing about that for quite some time and have been trying to communicate and converse with him. But anybody that knows G. Craig Lewis, they know that he's very elusive. He's not, he's not one to um, hold himself accountable, i.e. The, the elders that he has there. They're not biblical elders to hold him accountable. So he's basically his own, his own authority. Um, so he's not um, one to um, to like to be questioned about anything. So uh, hopefully, I hope I answered your question on that. But yeah, the, the, the sexual uh, accusations, which have been proven, and not just allegations, but they're accusations that can be proven. Um, those were discovered um, a couple of months ago, probably around early October, I think we were around that time, probably around October um, is when I, is when those things were discovered uh, with me. And so I began trying to, you know, do some work, do some research and, and confirm some things and it's been confirmed. And so, you know, I tried to reach out to him and, and, and present the facts, but uh, I, along with other brothers who knew him, uh, he refused to submit. He refused to even be um, entreated with, with the with the facts that he already knew were true, and so he mentioned to uh, Fred Price Jr. in a conversation with him uh, regarding the email that I had sent to Fred Price Jr. because he was scheduled to attend uh, Fred Price Church in February to do his True Behind Hip Hop 13 um, recording, and, and and as a Christian, I believe the uh, the principle of First Timothy chapter four, uh, verse one through six. Uh, what needed to be applied and pointing out these things to the brethren, those who taught destructive heresies and, and covert and overt teachings that were demonic. Uh, Paul says, he says, and pointing these things out to the brethren, you, you would be a good servant of our Lord Jesus Christ. So those are the reasons why I, um, um, informed Fred Price Jr. Uh, gave him the, gave him the facts, gave him my concerns and said, Hey, this is a person that, you know, y'all may have done, Recorded before, you may have known him for years before, but at the end of the day, uh, what does God's word say? Friendship comes under the authority of the infallible word of God. So um, I, I encouraged Fred to, uh, you know, to do his do his research, check the facts that I presented, and uh, did that. Had a conversation with with G. Craig Lewis. He presented uh, G. Craig Lewis with the, with the facts. G. Craig Lewis said that ninety percent of what I presented in that email was fabricated. 10% was true, but the 10% that was true had already been dealt with. Those were G. Craig's exact words to me via Fred Price Jr. And all of that information in that email was true. Um, everything in the email that I, that I presented was fact found and proven and confirmed. But of course he says 90% is fabricated. Well, what part of the 10% you're saying is, is true? But was dealt with because all you need is one to be disqualified as a pastor. That's your if that's your charge, um, because you got to be above reproach. So he didn't go into depth with that, and neither can we prove that that was the case that he did. So I do know that the people that he has sinned against, even though these people on my on my live right now have yet to receive a phone call, have yet to receive a written apology, a written letter of confession and repentance, have seen any fruits of repentance by G. Craig Lewis. So. What are they lying to? And I'm talking about from people who just who, who started with him to people who had left this year. They've never seen this man admit any sin that he I'm talking about a sin that you can say, OK, that's sin in the Bible. That's sin. And he's confessed. He said the same thing that the Bible said sin was never. He's made excuses instead of confessions. So hopefully that answers your questions on that. Um 
who are the elders there? Uh, you have Aaron Lewis. Let me read the let me read the uh, the, the list here. You have Aaron Lewis. You have Ken Rose and G. Craig Lewis. Those are the elders there. Those are the elders there. Um, so yeah. Anyway, um, just wanted to share the letter with you all. Uh, I believe that letter deserves its own its own live, and uh, I promised that I was going to uh, I was going to read it. So anyway, um, I'm gonna let you all go. Um, Appreciate you all's support. Keep me in your prayers. Uh, pray that uh, the Lord keep me uh, strong, alert, faithful to him and to my family. Uh, be praying for, for that, that I keep balance um, with that, uh, with the mission that God has given to me. So I think that's all I have to say tonight. Uh, will audio receipts of sexual sin be uploaded? Uh, I don't. Well, eh, I mean, I have them. I have them. Um. Uh, We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, but I do I do have them. I, I do have them. So, um, oh, you said Elder Ted? Yes, I don't, I don't know who all the elders are. I just know those three that were mentioned in the, uh, in the letter. Um, but yeah, so to ask you a question, um, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if I, if I've, if I'm going to release those right now. I think the video that I've already put out that that pretty much says it all. Um, it is definitely G. Craig Lewis's voice. Uh, it is definitely him telling the woman to, to, to spin around, to have that Marilyn Monroe effect. Um, so um, I don't I don't know if presenting any more evidence, quote unquote, um, would be necessary at this time. Um, not saying that I won't. Just saying that I don't really see the need for me to present present that. But I do have it. I got hundreds of hours of uh, of audio, audio evidence. I have hundreds of hours of it, and I'm not lying. I have my own file of it. So, um, so yeah. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Um, I hope you guys have um, understood what I was saying regarding the sarcasm, satire, the mocking. You see the biblical precedent for that. I'm not saying that you got to do that all the time, but I'm saying that there are situations like this that that you know. That necessitated. So, and actually, I'll read to you this quote. I'll read to you this quote. I'll read to you this quote. Um, and I meant to read it anyway. Um, what is the definition for? Uh, what is the definition for satire? It says, quote, and this is from Dwight Gingrich. Satire can be defined as, quote, the use of humor, irony, exaggeration, or ridicule to expose and criticize people's stupidity or vices, particularly in the context of contemporary politics and other topical issues. And that's from the new Oxford American Dictionary. Like the Babylon Bee. Babylon Bee, they put out satire, you know, exposing, mocking, things like that um, um, regarding issues going on in the church. But this author also says, Dwight Gingrich also says that uh, here are... Uh, here are biblical texts that he has shared or actually tentative conclusions that he has shared regarding the use of satire, sarcasm and mocking. Uh, satire is an important, though secondary form of Christian proclamation. Satire can be an effective way to get attention so that people actually hear and remember your words. Satire can stir sincere seekers to a more diligent search for truth. Satire can effectively expose people's hearts, their false motives and bad thinking. Also, Satire, uh, the strongest satire, which is sarcasm or mocking, is usually best reserved for false teachers who need to be publicly exposed in order to protect others from their influence. Let me read that again. Because I don't think y'all heard me. The strongest satire, which is sarcasm or mocking, is usually best reserved for false Teachers who need to be publicly exposed in order to protect others from their influence. That is what you saw and have been seeing on my page regarding this whole G. Craig thing. The gifts, the memes, all of that. Yes. I will say, you know what? Go it is as the spirit leads you to do it because this man has been doing it for decades. 
for at least two decades, rather. Um, so, yeah. Go for it. Go for it. Or in the words of G. Craig, do it. <laughs> do it. All right. Um, anyway. Yeah, Natalie, I, I, I agree with you on that. If someone wants to see more than the side eye goes up wondering, what are you hoping to gain or see? I, I agree. I agree. I, I, I don't, we don't need to, we don't need to, to see porn to know that something is, 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 I mean, if you already got people, if you already got people, you know, already telling you, this is what's on these videos. Why do you need to see it? Um, so anyway, I'm about to let y'all go. I got to get my food. I'm hungry. I said enough. So I'm about to get up out of here. Anyway, I love you all. Y'all have a great evening. Uh, until next time, you know the drill. Whatever you do, go all to the glory and honor of God. God bless.